everyone. Welcome to AWS reInvent 2024. We are live here in the Expo Hall, and pardon the construction, but the Expo is not open yet. It opens today. Oh, hey, there. It opens today at 4 o'clock, but we are here bringing you the latest and greatest features and announcements from reInvent. My name is Jeff Marushak, one of your hosts. I'm a senior solutions architect on our Department of Defense Air Force team. And my wonderful co-host, Robbie, tell them who you are. Hey, folks. Robbie Velson. I'm a senior developer advocate focused on our hybrid and edge services. And it's a perfect segue. We just talked about hybrid nodes with EKS. We're staying in the Amazon EKS domain. Going to talk to two of our specialists, Alex and Todd, for the Kubernetes team, telling us a little bit more about automating Kubernetes clusters with Amazon EKS Auto Mode. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, that's right. Hey, everyone. My name is Alex Kester. I'm a product manager with Amazon EKS. I, I work on all of the compute features for the service, um, the latest of which, of course, is Auto Mode, and really excited to tell you a little bit about it today, as well as show you a demo um, to give you a sense of what it looks like in practice. Yeah, my name's uh, Todd Neal. I'm a software engineer in the EKS, and uh, yeah, I've been spending a lot of time working on EKS Auto, and super excited to share it with you all. Great. Yeah, so with e EKS, let's start with Kubernetes. Really cool thing, but then you start to play with it and you realize to build it and to set it up, it's pretty hard. So then EKS comes around, a managed Kubernetes service from AWS, and makes things a little bit easier and arguably a lot easier from doing it manually. That's right. But there are still some things, uh, maybe pain points, but some more manual things on top of managing EKS, especially in a production level that is still the responsibility of the, co the customer. And it seems like auto mode is going to help even more. So can you, can you paint us those three it, steps? It, like what is there and what isn't? It's truly been, you know, it's been a journey for EKS. We actually, we launched Amazon EKS here about seven years ago at reInvent. Um, and it, it helps customers with the control plane part of Kubernetes clusters. So Kubernetes cluster has effectively two main parts, a control plane uh, that manages effectively the, like the, uh, the cluster itself, uh, the health and sort of uh, readiness of that cluster, and then the data plane where applications actually run. And so when EKS launched, it was primarily focused on alleviating the undifferentiated heavy lifting of managing that cluster control plane. And since then, you know, we've built a lot of features that help customers uh, with the data plane of their clusters. EKS Automode is sort of the culmination of all of that work and truly provides a managed cluster data plane um, for Amazon EKS. W one of the things that we're really excited about is that it, it comes with all of the things that are necessary for running true production grade applications on Amazon EKS. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, like you were, you were alluding to, there's a lot of work that goes into getting a cluster ready for um, actual production use cases. You have to install a bunch of add-ons, you have to configure and select compute instances to use, um, and then you finally get to actually deploy your applications. Now, once they're running, there's a bunch of work that goes on in sort of like the day two phase or era of that cluster monitoring, um, you know, to making sure that infrastructure remains healthy. And this is all the work that Amazon EKS, that EKS Auto Mode um, will be taking off of our customers' plates uh, and you know, making something that is, is AWS's problem. I think it's, a, it's something that, that we do particularly well and uh, allows our customers to benefit from the seven years of experience that we have operating Kubernetes clusters. Yeah. So if I have an Amazon EKS cluster today and a Kubernetes manifest, some application that I want to deploy and I'm excited to use EKS Auto Mode, what's the change in developer experience, if at all? Yeah, so there, there is a bit of a change, although you'll still be able to use all of the Kubernetes sort of tooling and um, primitives that you've grown accustomed to and, and maybe have even chosen um, you know, to use Kubernetes as a result or you know, for. Um, but the, the step of getting started will be that much easier. So um, one of the other things that we're really excited about with the launch of Auto Mode is a revitalized EKS cluster experience, so create cluster experience. You can now create production grade EKS clusters with a single click um, through the Amazon management, AWS Management Console. I kind of want to see that, Jeff, don't you? <laughs> Seeing is believing. Yeah, and, and what's interesting is we usually talk to customers, I'm sure you do too, about the shared responsibility model. That's right. And we always talk about how that line between what the customer's responsible, responsibility is and AWS's changes depending on what type of service you use and then what features you tend to use. Yep. So it seems like we're shifting that line a little bit with auto mode with you're taking on more responsibility responsibility for the customer? I'd say more than just a little bit. We're, okay. shif we're shifting this, this the sort of shared responsibility boundary between AWS and our customers substantially, so that it also includes not just the cluster control plane, like when we launched the service originally, but also a lot of the data plane itself, so the customers can focus just on building and running yeah. their applications, yeah. innovating in a way that's the most critical for their businesses. Yeah, let's see this. Uh, I'd love to 
let's see this in action. I want to see the one click. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's switch over to the demonstration and, and show you that. So Alex alluded to the uh, new and improved Create Cluster experience. We'll just go show you what that looks like now. I love your cluster names. Yes. And, uh, Rock Badger. <laughs> so if you've seen EKS before, you'll notice that now there's this new setting up at the top, a quick configuration with EKS Auto Mode. Um, EKS has selected a new cluster name for me. It's selected the most recently supported version of Kubernetes. I happen to have some roles from my cluster and node that are already pre-configured and can work. But if I didn't have them, I could click these buttons to go create those roles. Perfect. But nice. these are pre-selected. Uh, it's selected my VPC, which is already configured and pick some private subnets in that VPC. And you notice I actually haven't had to click anything else yet. It's, uh, <laughs> it's already pre-configured all that stuff. If I want to look, I can go expand this cluster configuration and see what's going to happen. Um, it shows my default managed node pools here that will be attached. It shows that I'll have a uh, cluster admin access. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and click Create. You know, while, while Todd's creating this cluster, um, one of the other things I think that's really critical about auto mode is that while you know we're creating a new cluster here, this is also something you can enable in an existing cluster. So if you're already using EKS, you already have workloads deployed in your in a Kubernetes cluster or environment. Um, this is something you can enable in existing clusters and start to migrate workloads over to use it as as sort of appropriate. Um, so while it's great to be able to create a cluster with a single click now, also you know. Uh, uh, accessible from existing clusters. So it'll take a few minutes for that cluster to get ready. So I've got one that's already up and running and we'll show that. Um, so in my cluster, I don't have any nodes. Yep. I've got no pods. Normally this would be a bad thing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even have any daemon sets. This, um, this is a great demo. The world yeah. starts. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, I'll go ahead and uh, Actually, I'll be applying a Helm chart, so we'll look at the values for that Helm chart to see what it looks like. You'll see I have uh, an application. It's got you know a MySQL database with a persistent volume that's backed by EBS. There are several services with endpoints. Uh, we have some topology spreads, so our, or our pods will run on different nodes. And we have an ingress that will configure a load balancer. And I'll just go ahead and install that Helm chart onto my empty cluster. And this is something that's available for folks out there maybe listening in. Um, this is available on ECR Public. Uh, so if you wanted to go and try this yourself, feel free to look for the retail store app, sample oh, app. Yeah. yeah, something that we, we, we use a lot to sort of demonstrate, uh, demonstrate EKS. And so that, that retail store app is, uh, if you go read the description of it, it's intentionally over-engineered to be good for demonstration purposes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of services. There's multiple databases. There's an ingress. There's a lot of stuff going on. Um, so this is what's actually being applied to my cluster and being set up. And I'll flip back to that cluster, exciting rock ant that was created. And we'll go look at the compute tab. And we can see that EKS Auto has already launched a node. Um, it's using one of the managed node pools. And Alex, you want to describe uh, what a managed node pools bring to our customers? Yeah, so so this is one of the kind of key pieces of EKS Auto Mode. It's a Kubernetes native way to specify effectively the the compute. Uh, scaling policies and configurations for your cluster. So all the things that you would like to be true about the compute that auto mode will launch in service of your applications. Um, you can be as specific or as sort of general as you'd like. Um, and auto mode will be smart enough to make the, the best choices in terms of the compute that it launches, both to maximize uh, uh, application availability as well as minimize cost. And this is a fundamentally new developer experience as opposed to having to explicitly say, hey, I want to manage no group of what, C6A, C6A large. That's right. That's the undifferentiated heavy lifting that you're offloading through auto mode. Yeah, and, and you know, what this really does is provides customers both the access to the breadth and depth of the EC2 instance type portfolio without having to navigate it in detail. And I think this is something that's really powerful to be able to leverage all of the latest innovations from EC2 um, in Kubernetes without having to necessarily be aware of all of what's you know uh, all of the work that's been going on. Yeah, and I like this uh, that example because so far in our session we've we've just talked about we make things easier and auto mode is going to be really cool and then let's demo it. So yeah, let's see some of these specific things. So yeah. we see these managed node, node pools and what else specifically is this making easier? Yeah, sure. So we'll go uh, click into resources. We see that our pods were created. We installed that Helm chart. Uh, we'll actually go and look at storage. And we see we have a persistent volume claim with a persistent volume that is backed by EBS. So that volume was created, automatically attached to the instance. It's going to follow that pod around. Gotcha. I didn't do anything to make that happen. It just worked out of the box. Yeah, it was in the Helm chart because we saw that in there, mm -hmm. the EBS. Yeah, perfect. 
we'll go look at the uh, networking and we have those multiple services that were in that architecture diagram but we'll go look at this ingress as well and you'll see we actually have a load balancer that was created and again i did nothing it was in you know i had an ingress in the helm yeah. chart and now i have a have a load balancer. And there's nothing specific in the helm chart for auto mode like no. there's nothing you have to like prep a helm chart for auto mode it's just figuring it out. Well, one of the things that's really important to our customers is that uh, EKS is Kubernetes conformant. This basically means that you can use any kind of Kubernetes, standard, standardized Kubernetes application with it, or leverage any of the sort of array of CNCF or Cloud Native Computing Foundation open source tools with your cluster on EKS. And this still is true with auto mode. It's some, one of the foundational sort of tenants that we have Perfect. for the service. Awesome. All right. And I'll just... Uh, Click back real quick to see that all of our pods are actually up and running. And we saw a few restarts because there's some dependencies. Um, our back end needs the MySQL database to be up and running, but it looks like everything is good to go. So we'll now go visit our um, load balancer address. And we have a wow. fully up and running retail store just from applying a home That was chart. three minutes. That was it. Just I, three minutes. Who's counting? <laughs> <laughs> And we can navigate here and we can see that, you know, stuff is actually working. We can go through and check out all that sort of process. And yeah, that is it. Just install a home chart and EKS Auto joins in or basically fills in to create the compute, configure the network and create the storage and get your application up and going. It'd been cool if we if we can crowdsource some load testing and ask all of our viewers <laughs> to hit this website and then see some of this auto scaling. But cool. Yeah, that's great. Wow. I mean, maybe to summarize here, if you think about the top three benefits yeah. of EKS Auto Mode from both of you, yeah. um, what do you think those would be? I think first and foremost is it allows customers to delegate a ton of operational work that previously they had to take care of to AWS. This allows them to focus on the things that are most critical for their businesses, their applications, configuring them, um, and operating them efficiently, as opposed to managing infrastructure in Kubernetes. Awesome. From your perspective? <sighs> I really like the fact that it just brings automation and Kubernetes conformance sort of in a single package. Um, if customers want to run their own daemon sets with privileged pods, all that works on EKS Auto, and it, it just sort of works out of the box. As you, if, you, uh, if you're not used to Kubernetes, it's kind of how you envision Kubernetes Auto work. You know, I apply some Helm charts and things install, and everything gets up and going and wired up correctly, and it just kind of brings that magical experience to one-click create a cluster install the Helm chart, and my app is up and running. Yeah, I, I'd be remiss to not mention also uh, how Automo can help optimize costs. I, you know, one of the things that's really difficult as you scale on Kubernetes is sort of wrangling the, the sort of complexity of that infrastructure as it relates to expense. And one of the things that Automode has built in is automatically trying to find ways to optimize compute infrastructure to minimize costs, while still providing applications all the infrastructure they need to run efficiently and performantly. Great. I have a question now. This is based on what you've, I've learned from you guys today. Tell me if I'm right or wrong, but it seems like those extra EKS things customers needed to learn, that was like, we have to learn a little bit more about EKS specifically and less about Kubernetes. And it seems like auto mode is allowing people to have that truer Kubernetes experience without having to learn specifically EKS things. Is how... I think that's right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you think about like when we launched EKS back in 2017, there was, there was kind of this idea of doing Kubernetes the hard way, right? And uh, EKS made it so you could do it, you could do it that much more easily. EKS Automo means that you can do Kubernetes the easy way effectively. There's that much less about EKS or about infrastructure yeah. that you need to think about and manage, and you can focus just on the things that are critical for your business or specific to your business, maybe. Is it hard or, or how easy is it to, to see the auto stuff happening and to keep track of what's happening? I mean, you mentioned cost optimization. Um, things are automated. Mm -hmm. Is it easy for you to see what things are being automated? Yeah, so uh, we can actually go in and look at some of this stuff. Uh, so we'll go look at our node pools in particular. Um, we report status. Basically, we want to bring this, uh, bring EKS Auto to the Kubernetes developers where they're at. And so Kubernetes developers are used to looking at events. They're used to looking at conditions on objects, on nodes. So EKS Auto makes all those things visible to customers on the node claims, on the nodes, on the pods. So you can monitor those to see what EKS Auto mode is doing for your behalf sort of on the back end. 
Oh, that's great. And so you could see when you were deploying that retail workload from scratch, you do like a kubectl get pods watch, and you could see mm -hmm. the nodes that you didn't specify at all suddenly uh, sh show up out of nowhere, perfectly right sized to meet the workload, yep. and with the topology spread constraints, seeing some of the pods that have replicas spread across. Yeah, and tailing the, the Kubernetes events is another great way to get a sense of what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, on one hand, though, you shouldn't have to care about a lot of this stuff. You should just delegate this to AWS, to the EKS team, and that's fundamentally our job of with, with EKS Automotive is to take care of that for you. Well, one thing I always like to remember here is we are live AWS on air. We want to hear from the audience, the thousands of you tuning in here. How do you use EKS today? And what are you most excited to see with EKS Auto Mode? And I almost want to turn the question back to the two of you. What do you want to hear from customers and partners who start to use this feature for the first time? You, you know, there's so many different use cases that customers turn to Kubernetes for. It's, it's an increasingly popular operating model, essentially, for the cloud. I think that the, the most recent Cloud Native Computing Foundation survey said that 84% of organizations are either using Kubernetes in production or evaluating it for production use cases. Um, it, with that sort of, that wide range of use cases, it, it's, um, you know, I think it's, it's helpful to hear from customers, perhaps which with more niche or unique use cases, where we could be expanding the product in the future. Um, you know, where there's places that uh, you know we could be we could be investing to meet those kind of novel use cases, perhaps that are a little further afield from the uh, from the sounds like path. sounds like you want to hear about what features need to go into yeah. auto mode too. Yeah, <laughs> because exactly. that's what auto mode was born from hearing the needs of customers, what they would like to see automated and whatnot. So. And, and I think it's a it's a particularly like Amazonian value, right? We are customer obsessed yeah. and uh, want to hear from our customers what they need so that we can just go and build that for them. Perfect. What's next? What can you tell us about what's next? What are you looking forward to most in 2025? Well, I think you know what's next for, for us are a series of talks and sessions and customer meetings here at, at reInvent. Um, there's a whole a whole spate of um, Kubernetes ses Kubernetes sessions, both you know, workshops, chalk talks, breakout sessions. Todd and I will be uh, be here back here Wednesday afternoon, I think at 4 p.m. Uh, Cube 204 is the the session ID. Um, maybe a good place to, to come visit to hear in in greater detail what's what's coming up for for Automotive and for EKS. Hmm. Yeah, and you know, as I talk to customers. Uh, Customers that are watching, you know, talk to your AWS account team if yeah. this is something you're interested in. But what if you don't have an account team? Uh, you mentioned that that Helm chart was available on ECR. How would you, um, someone who's watching this right now, you know, they're not an enterprise customer, they yeah. want, but they want to play with it. What would you suggest them to do to play with auto mode? Is there, is there uh, any free tier available to play with this to see how things work? No free tier yet. Um, something that you know, be happy to hear hear feedback on from um, from you know the the community. Um, in general, though, the EKS workshops and other kind of like educational content have been updated um, to use EKS Auto Mode. And there's going to be a series of like uh, builder session GitHub repositories that will be going live over the next week. And that'd be a great way to to get started. Uh, I'd like to think though that you wouldn't even need any of that. You can simply just yeah. go to the console or or use EKS Cuddle. The, um, you know, the, the EKS command line application just to create a new cluster and, and poke around deploying whatever makes sense for you in, in it. Can, can we talk deployment methods for a second? I think that's a great point. So we showed the console experience. Mm -hmm. um, in just a few seconds remaining, this also supported the EKS Cuddle as well? Supported with EKS Cuddle, the AWS CLI, yeah, or the console. So any method that customers choose to deploy EKS Auto should work for them. Yeah, CloudFormation, Terraform, all the, all the tooling that you would use you know, to interact with, with AWS is available uh, to use with EKS Auto. Perfect. Alex and Todd, thank you so much for coming out and telling us a little bit about Auto Mode. Robbie, you want to take us out? Sure. Um, thanks so much for tuning in. Up next, we're going to hear from our friends Adrian and Todd about introducing declarative policies. You're watching AWS On Air. Stay with us. We'll see you soon.